How's it going, you guys? AZPlyo21 back again with another pay-per-view in our UFC save in WMMA5, and it is UFC 287, Luke versus Thompson 2. A big pay-per-view here today with three title fights, including one interim featherweight championship fight, heavyweight contest, and Nate Diaz in action as well. I'm AZPlyo21. I appreciate you guys. As always, be sure to leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitch and Twitter so you can keep up with me when I'm live streaming or when I'm doing whatever else I'm doing. Uh, following this pay-per-view, we have UFC Fight Night Edwards versus Ponzinibbio. Also got UFC Fight Night Hughes versus Gamrot. UFC Fight Night Yaquinta versus Eddie Alvarez. And then our next pay-per-view is UFC 288 Baga Utinov versus Inoue. That is in Japan for the flyweight title of the world. It should be a good one. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, actually, we're going to make that the main event, unfortunately. Sorry. Anyways, we have three title fights coming our way. Oh, God. Hold on. I think that Blake just made a very good point. No. No. At Bantamweight? Yeah, at Bantamweight, we have the unification. The unification title fight is next. So Jan and Cruz can fight. Although I was going to book Cruz and McDonald. So that sucks. McDonald can fight Borg. Oh, well. I saw Cruz there, and uh, it said that Borg was going to make it a prelim fight. So, oh, well. Anyways. We move along, Luke versus Thompson 2. Let's get it started. Taking place in Las Vegas, Luke and Thompson going at it again. Let's go ahead and get this pay-per-view underway. Yushin Thunder Okami taking on Fabian Edwards in the middleweight division. Okami 41 and 13, number 20 in the division, taking on Edwards undefeated at 15 and 0, only 29 years of age, 13 in the middleweight division, coming off a win over Alexander Shlomenko. And it is Fabian Edwards staying undefeated at 16-0 after knocking out Yushin Thunder Okami. And he's calling out Elias Theodoru, who I believe... No. Theodoru isn't, isn't on hiatus. Kanaka Murata taking on Ayaka Hamasaki in the straw weight division. And it's Hamasaki at 40 years of age getting a big win over Murata. Does she retire? She does. So that sucks for Murata. <laughs> you lose and the girl is just like, yeah, I'm done. Oh, well, well. Appreciate it, Hamasaki. F's in the chat for Ayaka Hamasaki retiring at the age of 40. Shuya Stealth Kamakubo taking on Grant Dawson in the featherweight division. Very similar record between the two of them. And it's Kamakubo getting the win via unanimous decision. He is now 2-1 in the UFC. Magomed Nurov taking on Brock Weaver. Weaver, 19-4-1. He's the underdog against Nurov here today. And Nurov knocks out Brock Weaver. Who was doing very well up till this point. Brock Weaver, not the best guy in real life. He uh, runs dog fights, so he's kind of an asshole. But he's been doing well up to this point. Gets knocked out by Magomed Nurov. So, you know, karma's a thing. Tony Gravely taking on Mark De La Rosa. Mark De La Rosa, of course, famous for being the husband of our former champion, Montana De La Rosa. Tony Gravely, not famous for that much. Minus 570 favorite over Mr. De La Rosa. And Gravely gets a unanimous decision victory here today and proves to 25, 6, and 1. All right, moving on. Justin Willis taking on Brett Big Dog Martin in a battle of the heavyweights. Martin is 14, 2, and 1. And it is a very close fight between the two of these guys on paper. Willis, three inches taller, coming off two straight wins in WEC and making his comeback to the UFC and losing in a fantastic fight to Brett Big Dog Martin. Now 4-1 and one in the UFC. And calls out Alexander Gladkoff. Christos Giagos taking on Irish Joe Duffy. Of course, Irish Joe coming off the loss to Kamaru Usman in the first uh, round of the Super Lightweight Grand Prix. Trying to make another statement by 
<coughs> getting back in the win column against Christos Giagos here today. And he, in fact, does submission victory for Irish Joe in round at number two. Max Power Nunes taking on Punahele Soriano. 10 and 1 is Soriano taking on Max Power Nunes. 23 and 4. Uh, normally, Max Nunes ends up being pretty good in this game. We're going to see what happens here. Soriano, a big TKO victory over Max Nunes here today. And he's calling out Jonathan Wilson in the process. Tyson Pedro taking on Khalil Roundtree. Pedro, minus 630 favorite over Roundtree here today. Plus 500 underdog Roundtree. Number 19 in the division. Very back and forth career that he has had thus far. And Pedro gets a submission victory. Rear naked choke over Khalil Roundtree here today. Improves to 11 and 5. And he's now won three straight. Moving on. Arnold Allen taking on Kevin Aguilar in the last prelim. Allen, 18 and 5. He's ranked. Aguilar, 20 and 6, number 19. Aguilar a big favorite and it is Kevin the Angel of Death Aguilar who gets a unanimous decision victory over Arnold Almighty Allen here today. Moving on to our main card, Derek Brunson taking on Nate Diaz. Brunson 24 and 9. This is a welterweight fight for Derek Brunson. Uh, very back and forth for him after fighting Darren Till for the title, decides to make a move up to light heavyweight, loses to Alexander Rokic, and now doing the exact opposite, moving down to welterweight to fight Nate Diaz. And Nate Diaz TKOs Derek Brunson in round number one. Nate Diaz might find himself in the top 10 somehow. That is kind of hilarious. Derek Brunson's on three straight losses all of a sudden. Francis Ngannou taking on Stipe Miocic in the heavyweight division. Ngannou, minus 300 favorite over the former champion and Stipe, who is now 40 years old. And uh, no contest to Alistair Overeem in his last fight. For Ngannou, he's coming off losing to John Jones for the second time as he tries to claim the title. Before that, beat Tuivasa and Anthony Johnson. And it's Francis Ngannou who beats Stipe Miocic via TKO in round number two. So a big, a big win for the Predator here today. Now, of course, the real life heavyweight champion. As we arrive at our first title fight of this pay-per-view, Zabit Magomed Sharipov taking on Brian T-City Ortega. Ortega coming off a win over Darren Elkins. Before that, fought for the interim title against Yair Rodriguez and lost. On the other side, you have Zabit Magomed Sharipov coming off a loss to Max, or coming off a loss to Jose Aldo. <coughs> Before that, beating Pitbull. And uh, unfortunately, just due to him being available, was the next available guy to fight for the title here tonight. For the interim title, whoever wins this is probably just going to be fighting Max Holloway. So let's go ahead and get it started as we are underway. Ortega moving in. Uh-oh, left in his guard. Trying to go for the clinch here, looking for a trip. Ortega can't get it. Again, looking for that takedown, he can't get it. Going into the clinch, looking for another takedown. Solid base. Ortega still looking for the takedown, and Magomed Sharipov just stays up. Apparently, the round went to Ortega. This is for the interim featherweight championship of the world. Side control here. Ortega tries to move into guard. Second round. This fight is kind of boring, honestly, for the interim title. As uh, it looks like it might be one to one. Round three underway. 
T-City, and Zabit Magomed Sharipov. We have not seen Zabit fight in real life in a long time. And he just got kicked out of the rankings as a result. Ortega looking for a takedown. Can't get it. Nope. Ortega nearly gets taken down. Ortega looking for a takedown himself. No. Man, these guys are just going back and forth and trying to take each other down. Everyone's a little tired now as a result. Magomed Sharipov pulls guard. Grabbed a guillotine on the way down, but Ortega pulls free. 18 seconds left to go in round three. Round three expires. And that one apparently went to Zabit. Round four underway. Body kick for Zabit. Magomed Sharipov coming in close. Hits Ortega with a leg kick. And I mean, Zabit coming off a loss might win the interim title here. Down into side control now. Quickly grabs Ortega, looking for a takedown again, and he slams down Ortega. Can't manage to mount him, trying to get something going here, Zabit. Not doing any damage. One minute left to go here in round four. It looks like Zabit is more than likely winning on the scorecards. So Ortega might need a finish if he wants to be the interim champion and, I mean, fight Max Holloway the way that he was really supposed to. Looking for a takedown. Sabit can't get to it. Trying to do it again. Nope. But this is the final round. Nearly halfway through and it looks like Magomed Sharipov might be the new interim featherweight champion. Ortega looking for a takedown. He can't get it. And again, this time he gets it. Throwing a couple punches. Ortega trying to pass guard. Half guard it is. Final minute of round five. Ortega, I mean, you can transition all you want, but it looks like you're going to lose this fight. As that is the end of round five. And Ortega probably took that round. So ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. <coughs> oh, jeez. The judges score the contest 50-45, 48-47, and 48-47 for the winner by unanimous decision. And now, the interim UFC featherweight champion of the world, Zabit Magomed Sharipov. Figured as much, one judge gave him all five rounds. Interesting. And now he says he plans to go and become the unified champion. So Max Holloway has a date with Zabit. Doug Rose Namajunas defending her championship against Carla Esparza in our co-main event for the strawweight championship of the world. Carla Esparza, former champion after beating Weili Zhang, lost it immediately to Claudia Gadelia. Went on to beat Janda Roba, Rebos, and Gadelia. En route to this title shot, Doug Rose on the other hand. I mean, look at that. Lost to Zhang for the title after beating Jessica Andrade. Beat Nina Ansaroff, Jessica Aguilar, Tatiana Suarez, and Karate Hottie. Beats Gadelia for the title, and then beats Weili Zhang. It's our co-main event of the evening for the Strawweight Championship of the World. Let's get it underway. Herb Dean, your referee. Tentative jab from Esparza. Doug Rose fighting. Uh-oh. Vicious right cross. Asparza falls to the floor. Nama Yunus pouncing. Shot after shot. It is over. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean calls us up to this contest at 1 minute, 18 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by TKO. And still, the undisputed UFC strawweight champion of the world, Thug Rose Nama Yunus. A big win for Thug Rose here today, defending her title against Carla Esparza. As we move on to the main event of the evening. And this is kind of a personal one for me because I'm such a big Wonder Boy fan. Wonder Boy Thompson fighting for the third time 
for the welterweight championship of the world against Vicente Silent Assassin Luque. Wonder Boy, coming off three straight wins, Easy DS, Robbie Lawler, and Alex Morono. Vicente Luque, absolute stud. Look at that, Nico Price, Ben Askren, Ponzinibbio, Michael Chiesa, GSP, Leon Edwards, and Jorge Masvidal. Unbelievable. He is the favorite today against Wonder Boy, 39 years old, eight years his elder. Luque, the champion and a dominant one at that. Time to see what he's got. It's our main event of the evening for the welterweight championship. Mark Goddard is our referee. There's the opening bell. Let's get this going. Luque coming forward. Luque able to grab Thompson. Oh no, it could be dangerous. Oh no. He takes down Wonder Boy. Thompson calmly getting away. Side control for Luque. Up against the cage. Looking to take him down. He trips Thompson, sending him down. Oh, this could be a long night. Luque tries to get a rear naked choke. He can't get it. <coughs> Thompson, both hooks in. One minute left to go. Rear naked choke. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Goddard calls a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 33 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked choke. And still, the undisputed UFC welterweight champion of the world, Vicente, silent assassin, Luke K. So very sad to see Wonder Boy lose in that, fa in that fashion. Uh, Vicente is just that good. He's just that good. Uh, yeah. There you go. Your main event, Vicente Luque, is just too good. Fantastic fight. We'll give it to Martin and Willis. Uh, Nama Yunus, a performance bonus for her. And uh, we'll give it to Punahele as well. $36 million in profit. Love to see it. Top paid fighters were Nate Diaz, Nganu, and Thug Rose. Thompson right after that. Love to see it. Where is our champion at? Vicente Luque made $31,000. And he's such a dominant champion. We're going to update our rankings and take a look at what is next to come in the save. As always, I appreciate you guys for watching. I'm AZPlyo21. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking about Vicente Luque as such a dominant champion. Also, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitch and Twitter so you can watch my live streams and keep in contact with me if you so choose. Appreciate you guys as always. Uh, RBM is not so happy. Tristan was pretty, uh, pretty psyched that Nate Diaz won. I'd be pretty psyched if Nate Diaz won too. I'm excited to see him fight. Even though Leon Edwards will probably win, I, Nate Diaz is always an exciting time. And it'll be my first time watching him fight live in person. So I'm stoked. Just the idea of me being able to go to three straight pay-per-views because it's looking, it's looking like Arizona is going to get UFC 263, which is the Adesanya Vittori card. And Adesanya is one of my favorite fighters. I, honestly... He probably is my favorite fighter at this point because DC's gone, Habib is gone. So it's probably Adesanya. Adesanya and Wonder Boy. Who's going to beat Luke? I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, it, it might be someone coming back from the super lightweight tournament, honestly. Because uh, he beat McGregor. You know? So it's done. Maybe McDonald? Maybe Rory McDonald? But he's in the super lightweight division. Who boy. Rankings. Let's go ahead and update him. Ngannou moves up to number two. Miocic up to number nine after losing. Interesting. Okay. Uh, light heavyweight Pedro up to number nine. Wow. Okay. Middleweight Gastelum up to number four. A lot of guys moving down. Uh... Okami down to 23. Edwards up to number 10. At welterweight, Nate Diaz up to number 6. What did I say? <laughs> that is in... Hey, well, I mean, hey! 
Warley Alves coming back uh, in like eight months or something, right? Six months. Uh, Nardiev, if he beats Colby, or Colby, if he beats Nardiev, maybe. Oh, no. Because Colby's on two straight losses. That would not make that much sense. Who's Diego Sanchez fighting? Uh, Diego Sanchez is fighting Chaos Williams. So 24 versus 23. But yeah, I'm thinking Nardiev if he beats Colby. That'd probably be the fight to make. Because Alves is injured. Tyron Woodley? Maybe do Tyron versus Wonderboy now? That could be something we do. I don't know. A lot of possibilities. Uh, at lightweight, Joseph Duffy up to number 12. At a boy. Featherweight, Zabit, of course, is our new interim title holder. Sanchez needs a title shot. He beat Habib, for God's sakes. <laughs> Yeah, Thompson Woodley 3 is definitely a lock. We're going to make that happen. Ortega down to number 6. Uh, Aguilar up to 17. Gravely now ranked. You love to see it. Flyweight's all moving up because uh, what's-his-face got popped for PEDs again. Uh, nothing at Bantamweight or Flyweight, but at Strawweight, Esparza down to number 5. And it's looking like if Hibas wins over Jandaroba, Honestly, it's whoever wins between Janaroba and Hebos is getting the title shot next. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. All right. Next time I see you guys will be for UFC Fight Night Edwards versus Ponzinibbio. Also got Hughes versus Gamrot, Yaquinta versus Alvarez, and Fajeda versus Gillespie live from Japan. Also on that card, Bago Tinoff and Naoki Inoue. I'm AZPlayout21. Hope you enjoyed this video. You guys have a very good rest of your day.